Thank you. Uh oh. Okay, so I know we're um, we're supposed to be representing Latinos in a uh, positive light here. So I got a little nervous when they told me that Alex wanted to honor me here because I was like, has he not watched the show? <laughs> um, I murdered someone in my first year at law. So, but then I thought, you know what? They're all murderers on the show, so we're good. It's, it's all good. Uh, it's true. It is true. Um, in all seriousness, though, when I, I landed the role two years ago, I got an email from Shonda Rhimes and Pete Nowak, the creator of the show, saying, Carla, do you want to make Laurel into a Latina, seeing as you're Mexican? And what I remember thinking I read was, Carla, do you want to play a sexualized woman who's only talked about her uh, because of her appearance? Do you want to be involved in a drug cartel? Do you want to be drinking tequila? Do you want to have an accent? Do you want to? I was like, no! Ni madre is no, no way. No way, no way, no. Uh, and then I thought, actually, that's exactly why Laurel needs to be a Latina, the Latina that I never had growing up on TV. So I want to thank the creator, Pete Nowak, Shonda Rhimes, and the casting director, Linda Lowry, for making a show where inclusion and diversity are the norm and the platform through which these amazing stories are told, these night fills of you know, OMG, nail-biting, anxious-filled nights of TGIT as well, of course. Um, but yes, being a Latina doesn't define Laurel. Being Latin doesn't pigeonhole her into a stereotype. Um, it's one of the many, many characteristics that uh, she has. And why? Because we have Latin writers on the show. We didn't first year, but we do. <laughs> Tania Saracho, Fernanda Coppel, and they are pushing for Laurel to be able to speak Spanish, and I have been able to speak Spanish on network TV, which means the whole community feels like they're being included and they're being seen. Thank you. Um, when I was little, I actually wanted to be an actress so that the guy, the boy I had a crush on, would actually be forced to see me on screen. Like, he'd have to sit down and see that I exist. And then I'd be like, okay, now you see that I'm here and now you're gonna fall in love with me. Um, and however superficial that sounds, I um, realize now that that's rooted in a deep-seated need to be loved and accepted. And giving Latinos an opportunity on screen has the power to make a whole community feel like they exist, like they are worth being loved and accepted. So um, I am very excited and I wanna, um, sorry, I also, I have my notes. Um, I, yeah, Viola Davis, working with Viola Davis has been amazing and she's led by example and she's taught me to speak up, so I will. Um, I have to say, it's not okay that on Sunday this year at the Oscars, not one Latino is going to be nominated for their on-screen work, not one. Um, why? Why? Because our stories aren't being told. The studios aren't telling our stories. Even if we make up 38% of the tickets on the weekend, the box office tickets. So they want our money, but they don't want our stories. So there's a lot of change uh, that still needs to be done, but I wanna thank the National Hispanic Media Coalition and Alex Nogales for being the change and the channel through which we can see that change and being the change that we need. And le quiero dedicar esto a todos los inmigrantes, todos los inmigrantes, que ahorita están sufriendo porque los están separando de sus familias, they're fearing for their lives. De verdad, les dedico esto y les prometo que yo voy a seguir representando sus historias porque merecen ser contadas. I want to, I want to dedicate this to all the, uh, the immigrant, the Latin, all the immigrants that are fearing for their lives right now that um, are being separated from their families. And um, this is for you guys and I really hope that we continue to shine a light on your stories because they deserve to be told. Muchas gracias. <laughs> 